I'm lucky enough. I pray to God I'll be lucky enough. I'm going to see a, a, a world one day where we're not even going to be called vegans. It's just going to be a given that we don't use animals as natural resources like we use coal and gas or, or oil from the ground. Just like we don't walk around calling ourselves abolitionists. They used to call themselves abolitionists <laughs> before the Civil War. But we don't walk around. We're, it's just a given that we're all against slavery. <laughs> you know? I mean, I hope to see a world like that one day where we don't call ourselves vegans. <laughs> Veganism should not exist as a term. <laughs> That's what you guys don't understand. You guys are... You think that veganism is a lifestyle choice? It's just a lifestyle choice that you that you decide to do if you're hip and cool. But it really isn't. Being an abolitionist wasn't a lifestyle choice that you just did if you're hip and cool. It's something that people who were who had an open mind and could think and could humble themselves to realize that, at least in the case of, of America, where slavery was kind of based on skin color because the um, Declaration of Independence said that all men are created equal. And so if all men are created equal, for Americans, now they need a justification for why it's okay to keep uh, the Africans who they had at the time as slaves. Because all men are created equal. Right? It didn't say anything about skin color making you less equal. But Americans had to be able to justify that at that time. So now if you're black, you're less than human. You're subhuman. And that's where that came from. Because before slavery, the same race would do it to the same race. If you came from the wrong tribe and you came from a neighboring, a neighboring tribe and we weren't agreeing with you, but we had more power than you, we were going to subject you to slavery. American history and uh, the transatlantic slave trade, that was like the first time where slavery became a racial thing. But before, the same people were enslaving the same people. Slavery is as old as prostitution and, and um, using animals as commodities. They've, it, those things have just always been here. But just because slavery has been around that long, that never made it right. And you guys with this... Um, Oh, now you're equating black people to animals and all. And what? First of all, I think it's offensive that um, one would jump to black people when you talk about animal slavery. Really? That says something about you. I say something about animal slavery and you're just going to jump to black people? Slavery doesn't belong to black people, okay? Slavery wasn't invented for black people. Slavery isn't just black people's pain to bear. What's nice about slavery is that everyone can bear that pain with us. Black people don't have to hold it on by themselves. We don't have to hold that trauma by ourselves. Yes, we experience a, our, our own unique individual trauma, because I am black, but it is not just for us to bear. Or when you uh, relate the animal holocaust to or when you just call it a holocaust to animals, and some people just joint, jump and point at Jews. Well, holocaust wasn't put in the dictionary for the sake of Jewish people. These are institutions, and these are acts of violence that can happen to beings other than humans. And when you're saying it's animal slavery or animal holocaust, you're not equating the victims. That is a very cheap way to chalk up that argument. You're not equating the victims at all. You're equating the mindset 
the same mindset that allows one person to see another person as subhuman and thus uh, justifiable to subject them to slavery against their will and to take away their freedom is the same mindset that allows someone to see an animal as so beneath them that now that animal can become a natural resource. The same mindset that allows people to be complacent while Jewish people are being rounded up and taken to concentration camps and put in gas chambers is the same exact mindset that allows the exact same thing to happen to pigs when they're rounded up and taken to slaughterhouses and gas chambers. Hello, anybody. You're not equating the victim. You're equating the mindset. That mindset that says, I'm so superior that now I get to inflict unnecessary suffering on your life for my own selfish pleasure. So I would love to see a world where veganism is an archaic term. Whatever the internet looks like at that time, because I know it's going to be something wild. <laughs> I mean, I was only born in 98, but the internet, I, I've watched it my entire life, just how much it's changed. And it's incredible, just in my short 22 years. And I hope that I live long enough, or that a vegan world happens fast enough that I can see it. That would be such a beautiful thing to behold. Imagine if we treated animals, the least of these, if we treated the least of these with respect and dignity, and we affirm that the least of these deserve the right to life and to freedom and to not have to be subjugated to someone's own selfish whims. Imagine if we treated them right. How do you think we would treat others? Because I noticed that once I became a vegan and I started to see animals with respect, and it's just basic respect, y'all. It's basic respect. All you're doing is saying, yeah, these animals aren't here for me. Oh, there are 20,000 edible plants, not to mention their derivatives. I can go eat those instead of animals. You're just recognizing their <laughs> Their basic right to life. That's the basic thing, right? The right to live, just to be alive in the first place. The fact that you're here and that someone doesn't have to unnecessarily take your life. And don't come at me with lions, though. We're not lions. We wear clothes. Women walk around in their makeup, wigs and all that. You drive your car. You wash your butt every night with soap and water. You don't lick it. You don't want to do anything else a lion does, except when it comes to being barbaric and eating meat. Canines, though. What canines? The biggest land animal on the face of the planet, or, or the, sorry, yeah, the biggest land animal on the face of the planet, first of all, is a herbivore. Second of all, the biggest canines on the face of the planet belong to a herbivore, the hippopotamus. The elephant is the biggest land animal on the planet, is a herbivore. The hippopotamus has the biggest canines on the planet. They're not using it to take down gazelle. I mean, you look at these little stubby things in our mouths. Let me see you use your canines to take down a full grown cow. Let me see, that would be a sight to see. You get a quick one bucked in your teeth. You guys, I wanna see a world where Veganism does not exist as a term. It, does, it shouldn't need to. When you think of abolitionists, what image pops up in your mind? You instantly think of someone in like an old 19th century dress or something <laughs> with an old hairdo doing that one pose for their pictures. <laughs> you know how they did in the 19th century. Like you think of 19th century people when you, when you hear the word abolitionist. When we hear the word vegan, we need to be thinking back to 2020 era people. We can't be saying vegan in the year 2050 and it's still referring to the people of today.
because if it's still referring to the people of 2050, there's a problem there. Veganism should be a given, not an alternative. It is a given, not an alternative. I don't care what anybody says. To not un- unjustifiably take someone's life is not an alternative. It's not an alternative lifestyle. It is a given. It is a moral given. Veganism is a moral imperative for everybody. You are allowing these, you do not need these animals. You do not need to kill an animal to ensure your own well being. You do not need to sl- enslave an animal to ensure your own well being. You do not need to rape an animal in order to ensure your own well being. We do not need to slaughter trillions of animals every year because we're not y'all don't usually count the fish (laughs) these fish are individuals too y'all don't need to slaughter trillions of animals every year to ensure your own well-being your own safety your own happiness you don't i don't like the way vegan food tastes Well, I'm sure the cow doesn't like the way the knife feels in its throat. Which is worse? Veganism, as a term, needs to die. I hope that before... I hope to die at a very old age. And I hope that before I do die, I'm able to open up a dictionary. Go to the word vegan. And it says archaic in little italics right next to it. I would love to see that. 